So we wanted to chat to our champions today. Uh, we found that this was a really, really, really important um, thing to keep in the program because, again, the champions are leading a lot of these pitches. They're talking about where these pain points are. Um, and we do have some returning champions, alumni to the stage, and Aaron Rose. Welcome back again, starting a bit late in the program. And then John Ellerton from BT. Paola, ciao, Paola from EBU. <laughs> What's a running joke, because she's Italian, you know. You gotta say it, I can't just say it. Uh, and then a brand new champion, and Steve at Channel 4. So w first of all, welcome back, and then welcome again, too. Um, just to give us like a little bit over, you know, a lot has happened in the last, you know, five years or so, but it, it, even in like looking at the last year, you know, what kind of areas of innovation have like really, that you've seen make really big seismic shifts? Um, you know, kind of thinking about your business, thinking about disruption, thinking about what's influence and necessity. Generative AI tools becoming available to the public. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, as you know, DBU is the largest organization of public service medium. And uh, so machine learning, deep learning, all these, uh, you know, artificial intelligence are not new topics for us. And our members are already using uh, these uh, algorithms for, uh, I don't know, improving the content, uh, personalization, uh, uh, back office optimization. But I think that the generative AI, as we have also just heard, is bringing a new dimension to the table. Because uh, if you think about the possibility to create new images, uh, new video content, audio content, maybe replacing a real Anchorman with uh, AI based Anchorman yeah. or producing a paper just using artificial intelligence. So the opportunities are great in terms of creativity, innovation, uh, uh, in improving the productivity, but also the, I would say, the worries, the concern are great. Right. Uh, yeah, also because for public service media, it's really important to use this tool and make some adjustments, uh, I don't know how to call them, because we need this tool to be compatible with public service media. So, right. for example, this is also the reason for which some of our members have already published guidelines uh, um, and book uh, to explain a little bit how AI tools should be used, but also all these handbook, they include a section on generative AI. Thank right. you. So is it something, you're welcome, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you're not leaving Sorry, You're not getting out of this, there's only one I'm answer. Running okay. away. <laughs> it, do you find though, um, you know, because you mentioned things that are challenging and concerning yep. mixed with that feeling of excitement. You know, the butterflies in the stomach that we're all going through, yep. so many of this, the tech transformation, where are they weighing? Is it more kind of like you're concerned but you just do, fill up the glass half full and try to do something positive with it? Yeah, that's a little bit to the spirit and the feeling, I would say. But mm. uh, 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 as uh, we, we see, you know, every day a new tool pop, pops up, so yeah. you need to test the new tools to understand also how to benchmark these tools, to understand how you can integrate the tools in the current workflows. So there is a lot of work uh, to be done, a lot of fun, because it's uh, amazing what we, you can achieve, but at the same time it's quite... Uh, exactly. You know, and, and, and as a returning, as a founding champion from 2019, 2020, you come back yeah. every year, and I believe you're going <laughs> to be part of a pitch uh, proposal yeah. later today. Yeah, but it's all about, yeah, it's, it's all about too. generative AI integrated, integrated in the production workflow. And so. I believe that'll be pitch for, pitch by your close personal service <laughs> yeah, friend, Roberto. Roberto from the Rye. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the flip side, Steve, you know, as a uh, as a public service broadcasting versus commercial, what are, what has been the kind of seismic change that you've spotted, and what's exciting you? Yeah, so I think any any organisation that's on that traditional um, advertising driven <laughs> business model has realised there's been quite a seismic change in the last year or so, if not for the last few years. And um, as an organisation, we've had no real alternative but to start considering the um, opportunities around some of the emerging technologies, um, you know, AI and, and immersive and web free and, and really what the opportunities are available for us to offer uh, to us. But the reality is that we're, we're on a bit of a start of that journey. So we, we spend time now really talking internally about um, how do we assess uh, opportunities? How do we, how do we really understand the value and risk associated with those opportunity? Um, Channel 4, obviously for many, many years we've, um, we've commissioned and driven, you know, really innovative and challenging content um, uh, in terms of our, our broadcasting. Um, and we, have, we were first in, in lots of our kind of products and services. We were the first of the major broadcasters to, um, to launch our video on demand platform. Um, but probably like many other um, of our peers and organisations in this industry, we may have become a little bit complacent around um, the, the shifts that are happening in the industry. 
So I think for us, it, it's now understanding how we kind of um, tap in and understand those, those changes to our business um, and, and really understand where we are on that innovation landscape. Um, start really tapping into how do we allow our colleagues to be creative, um, empowered to, to innovate, um, but also how we kind of build that relationships with partners. So how do we create that shared value with partners? Right. And that's so really we're at the start of that process. So not really driven around any one particular technology or emerging technology, but really how do we set ourselves up for success in the future? Exactly. So some of those areas of innovation even you know, count as recognizing where to be looking and who to be collaborating with and who to be partnering yeah, with. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, That's Steve. And, and Aaron Rose, is your, if your mic is working, if it's not working, we can just pass the mic. It's just okay. borrow someone else's. Yeah, just don't drop the mic. We do that a bit later okay, when the drinks yeah. start. And you know, we haven't started good. drinking yet. Yes. Um, no, I think, uh, you know, everything that you both said, absolutely. Uh, you know, we are at a point right now of transformation. We're in a new yeah. era, right? And um, I think Tony mentioned something about, you know, people starting to become more comfortable with the tools and understand that they're tools um, and that this yeah. is a shift, right? And so it's like any technology that we've seen in our industry, whether or not that's black and white to talking pictures, you know, like that was very scary at that time, right? Mm -hmm. So we're now, we're now there. From a Verizon perspective, we're looking at network slicing as we come into this year. We're looking at private networks and how we can help enable post and production workflows. Yeah. Would you say those are part of areas of innovation that are necessity, like things you want, things yeah. you need, where's that balance? Yeah, I mean, there, there are, and I think, you know, as our world becomes much more connected, we're also really looking at edge compute as opposed to doing it in the cloud, and how can we bring that experience right. closer to the user? Exactly, cool. And John, do you have a working mic? Let's see, is this thing working? So yeah, I, I, I work in a, a particular business unit in BT, uh, Media and Broadcast, and we've built a business that does one of the most challenging things in television, which is transporting live, low latency live. Just that little thing. Just, of just that little thing. And, and you know, we always say that if we get it wrong, then billions of people notice immediately. So we're now in an industry where everything's changing, right? In yeah. terms of connectivity, in terms of connectivity technology, and um, 5G, low Earth orbit satellites, being able to use the internet to backhaul things, um, software-defined networking, putting processing in the cloud. Everything that we've rested our industry infrastructure on is in flux now. <laughs> So this is a really, really interesting time. So that's one of the reasons why I'm, well, why we're a champion of uh, one of the uh, accelerators uh, today, looking at um, this intersection of software and connectivity, and how do we enable the industry to take advantage of all of these things to do what we all want to do, which is to deliver the best quality content for the consumer. Wow, it sounds like you were about to read an audio book and uh, like, you know, <laughs> being so calming with your voice there. Uh, you know, and I know that you're a returning champion. And like, tell us yeah. about you know, everything you just said relies on a team. Yes. And relying on the cooperation between those moving parts, the cogs in the wheel. Now thinking about the innovation and you know, what's bringing you back to the accelerators, tell us about the importance of that collaboration to you. So, so my role in BT, um, I'm head of futures in media and broadcast, and I, I'm like a jackdaw. I look around BT Group, which is this enormous company, and I look at technologies and I think, ooh, that's interesting. Can we make use of that for broadcast? Here, I've got an even wider group of people to work with. <laughs> we can collaborate on stuff that well, only we can together imagine. So I was, we were one of the champions of uh, the 5G um, uh, production any, any, anywhere in the, in, in the world, the, the thing that we, we did a couple of years ago. And we were able to bring together a group of uh, broadcasters and, uh, and vendors and create something that individually we wouldn't have been able to do on our own. So it's, it's really exciting, and I love being here because there are so many great people. We're all in it together. We're all trying to in innovate together, and it's a great place to make some friends. There we go. Thanks, John. Uh, Paula, I, you know, again, how important is collaboration and innovation in the project that you work on? Because EBU, yeah. you know, does lead so much R&D yeah. in Europe. 
Uh, a good matching between the, let's say, the topics in the ABC Accelerator uh, and what our members, what the DBU is doing. Mm -hmm. And then um, what I really like about this experience is the speed. Because, uh, because you manage to, to know new people, so a new industry, new organization, uh, coming on board on this ABC Accelerator with their, their skills, their technologies, their, their know-how. And in four or five months, uh, altogether, we are capable to produce and output robust proof of concept. So that, for me, was really amazing, the speed, I would say. It's yeah. really enabled by this collaboration between uh, different industry organizations, uh, thanks to the, this initiative, the ABC Accelerator Initiative. Exactly. Thank you, Paula. I mean, and Steve, I know that... Um, you know, being the first time, you know, you being the first time in this room, and we've been looking to Channel 4 for a couple of years, so we're, we're grateful for you to make it today. You know, where, where are the areas of collaboration that you would like to get your teeth sunk into the next six months in this spring? Yeah, so um, I know we've been caught in for quite a few years now before we came on board, and obviously yes. we're now the, the uh, new kid in the playground when it comes to this stuff. So maybe we're, we're thinking that maybe we can bring uh, kind of fresh eyes to some of the, the opportunities. Um, you know, we're in a situation where uh, we want to work with, obviously, the, the collaborators in the room uh, to, to really understand um, that, that if we can be maybe a champion on some of the ideas, um, that we can kind of unlock some of the, the hugely kind of creative and knowledgeable people we have at Channel 4 to be involved in those areas. Um, it's a learning process for us, so it's going to allow us to, to work and learn from some of the the organizations that are involved and, and, and part of the collaborations um, that are at different stages of their innovation journey. Um, so we can drive a culture of experimentation, but the, the real challenge around experimentation is we want to be driven around value and how we kind of create that value, which I think is one of the core areas that you focus on in terms of the accelerators. Um, and so not just do innovation for the sake of doing innovation and that innovation theater. Um, so yeah, and it's just important for us at Channel 4 to, to start understanding how do we become good partners for innovation? Um, how, do we, how do we really put ourselves out there again um, to start understanding how do we build those relationships and, and how do we start understanding what, how do we generate value? Not just focusing on things that drive our own business forward, but also looking for things that, that focus on, on a, kind of the industry areas um, and focusing more on the future rather than less around what we're doing day to day. Exactly. And, and Aaron Rose, do you, do you agree with that as far as, you know, your, what do you look for in a diverse team? And Yeah, I mean, I think even just uh, creating this pitch going into this Accelerator Kickstart Day was really fun because I have an amazing team that I'm working with and a, a lot of them are here already. And it was just cool to pass these ideas back and forth and say, oh, that very much resonates. Let's tweak it this way. Let's tweak it that way. And it just felt very exciting. So it's really fun when you can really collaborate together and spark new ideas. Cool. And, and just kind of like wrapping up here around, you know, you're pitching number nine yes. today. Yeah. And, and um, you know, what are you looking for today? As from a champion's point of view, what are you looking for today as far as uh, not necessarily your project because we're going to tell, tell you about that a little bit later on, but as far as kind of, you know, where you want to explore the proof of concepts and, and, and working together, especially, you know, looking for that, the message to the industry that you want to give back. Yeah, so I think today the key word for me is authenticity, um, and we've heard that come up, uh, you know, earlier, but it's so true is that if we are going to be enabling a connected world, we have to be authentic in the way that we connect to people and engage with them, because that's what is going to retain our audiences in every piece of media that we see in this world. So that's what I'm looking for. I love that answer, Authent authenticity. John, we'll just go down the road here. Connect and Produce Anywhere uh, was an, in, an incredibly uh, ambitious program from last year. Yes. What we need to do now this year is uh, reassemble the group and make it real and actually prove that this thing really works. And I'm sure it will, and we can then deliver tremendous value to the industry. Thank you. And, and new solutions for you. Um, for me, the key word today is a generative AI in action, <laughs> as you said before. So I hope that we'll manage to get on board the industries um, 
um, that will offer us tools to generate, uh, um, for example, 3D object, uh, uh, 3D CG characters, uh, are capable uh, also to generate videos starting from a few pictures, uh, and so forth. So I hope uh, we'll manage, we get, uh, we get there. Excellent. And Steve? Yeah, I mean, from our point of view, obviously we're looking at things like um, new business models, um, diversifying some of our income streams, but I'm really interested to think, and Channel 4 really interested to think about how the, the impact on these emerging technologies and the creative side of our business as well. Um, I'm sure you've all seen the, the Sora demos and, and some of the other creative examples of AI, um, but they're not stories. They're, they're just technology demos. And I think one of the things we'd be really interested in understanding is is how is that next generation of storytelling uh, going to be supported by technology and putting the creator at the centre of that particular process? Um, so yeah, that's where we're looking for. We're looking, really looking for. Somebody sent me an article recently um, around Toy Story and the original Toy Story movie um, that it used technology that really to bring some of the abstract ideas together it, to, to bring them into reality, but. The, the human storytelling was still at the centre of the, the idea and it still used human talent to, to voice the, the characters and bring them together. Um, I don't think we've got a Toy Story yet in Gen AI. I don't think that, that we've hit that moment yet. But obviously from Channel 4, it'd be lovely if we can get to a position where we kind of identify our Toy Story moment at the end of this. We're looking, Paul, you got a cheerleader in the EBU here. <laughs> in his face. So we're thinking about uh, workflows inside, under the hood, um, from a technology point of view, from a connectivity point of view, and also what's so important in this room that we sometimes, you know, do need to keep at the front of it is from that audience point of view. You know, what is that content production? What are the, what are the ways that we know somebody will enjoy something and how they will enjoy it? So, uh, thank you so much, Steve, Paula, John, Aaron Rose, my champion panel. Thank you very much.